Oh, hello. Welcome to another Today's Decay. August 11th edition, where we're celebrating births and beginnings of everything important since the dawn of time. Because otherwise our days just meld into each other, right? Work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep. Uh, but on this day, in August 11th, throughout time and space, uh, in 1919, the Weimar Republic started, which uh, I've always viewed as a high point of subversive art and music and culture, films, German Expressionism, all sorts. Um, but knowing that in situations like that, the pendulum can swing the other direction and you then get uh, the rise of the Third Reich. 13, 14 years later. Um, maybe it's a fitting allegory for our times or worthy to uh, give pause for thought or to really take a look at some of the wonderful artwork that was created in that time. Um, also on this day in 1922, Ron Grainer was born. Maybe, maybe pronouncing his name right, maybe pronouncing it wrong. He was um, one of the people responsible for um, the creative uh, nonsense that uh, uh, was part of uh, early Doctor Who. So w one of the things I particularly like about early Doctor Who stuff is um, everything about it makes like such little sense. Who would have come up with this idea? And the answer is it's not really who. Uh, it's not who, it's how many. It's a whole group of people. And um, I I filmmaking, when it's not like auteurs, um, should be a collaborative process, right? And in this case, the creation of Doctor Who was just that. Uh, Ron Grainer was um, responsible for the, the opening title track, like the, the musical score for the opening credits, which like immediately sucks you in as soon as you hear it. And they've been using the same one like ever since the show premiered in the mid 60s. So it's quite an accomplishment, right? But yeah, it was a whole mixture of people and, and, and he was one of them. Uh, also on this day, Ronnie Dawson, the blonde bomber himself, Mr. Rockin' Bones was born. I was just talking about him this weekend. Uh, I was lucky enough to see him, I think twice maybe, uh, at the Rodeo Bar in Manhattan in the mid-90s. Uh, the Rodeo Bar was a destination point, uh, the, the epicenter of New York City rockabilly in the 90s, as booked every weekend by Greg and Joanne Van Bracken. Um, it was more often than not free to get in. They generally didn't card unless you had foot and a half high hair and were carrying beers in from off the street that they didn't serve in their bar. Note to self, don't do that again. Uh, but Ronnie Dawson, uh, I remember distinctly, he was like an older man, with like a, a big bright smile, and uh, the place was packed, and he just like, picked this guitar, like in the middle of a song, like just picked this guitar up over his head, big smile on his face, almost like Billy Zoom or something like that, and just like went booking it out the out of the room, still playing with like the guitar up over his head, and then like just like, it was like as if everywhere you looked, Ronnie Dawson was all around you. It, it was really good. Yeah, and as a 16 year old or something like that, to see uh, an original 50s recording artist put on such a performance, uh, well, needless to say, I was hooked. Uh, what else? On this day in 1960, Mario Bava's film Black Sunday premiered, starring Barbara Steele. Love this movie. Dripping with atmosphere. Here you go, right here. Um, yeah, I love this movie, and I think I may wind up watching it tonight. She plays uh, a, a um, her her character winds up getting killed in the first reel, and then her spirit winds up coming back uh, with her helper, Yavutic, which the only reason I'm talking about this is I like that I can pronounce it. Yavutic. Anyway, yeah, great movie, AKA um, Mask of Satan. And then lastly, on this very day, in 1962, uh, an epic battle first uh, reared its head uh, across screens uh, everywhere, which was Kong, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And uh, I, have, I have no real hopes for this new one. I 
no real hopes for the future. There's nothing to look forward to anymore. Unless you're going to put on an old movie like King Kong vs. Godzilla. And if you are, the question is which version? Because they made two different versions. Uh, the one that was released in Japan had Godzilla winning, and the one that was released in America had King Kong winning. So, you know, I feel like this is all very topical uh, posting, right? Basically, don't believe media outlets. Who knows what to believe in anywhere? They're all just force-feeding you their own opinion in a way that they think will be uh, 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 slurped down by you, the viewer. Who, and who, who's going to win in this epic battle, King Kong versus Godzilla? I don't know. Maybe you will if you tune in again tomorrow. All right. Goodbye.